what you have there uh, so well, very interesting. But why do you speak like American? <laughs> you know what I mean? We, even until now, we can't raise my American accent and so on. So all I'm saying is, once you reverse these terms and begin to notice a lot of these people sitting in this room, have American elements in it, inside our subjectivity, right? Not only people sitting in this room, but half century going through. Um, some people are using the term Americanization. In Japan, has a term called Americanism, right? So, in other words, the um, the I don't want to say complicity, but but our own subjectivity infiltrated by things American or the identification with them. Um, so it becomes non-problematic in the sense that when we critique US imperialism, a zip has nothing to do with ourselves. Right? So this is part I think Oscar knows you know this story the best because a lot of these things going on earlier, very much earlier on in, in the Philippines sort of self-critique, and in the sense, not simply this identification, that's too simple, right? So once you begin to notice that, then things also get shifted. Let, let me take the term American study. This is the, the, the real institution here, right? So what American study in Asia, what is the task? But I don't know whether it's being done, but I haven't seen it. Which, by definition, would take on the issue of Americanism in, in Taiwan as the object of study, right? rather than as the outside, right? or as to study the diplomatic relations between Taiwan and the US, and so on. So in that sense, the, the problematic will shift. Let me cite another example to be in dialogue with uh, with Hyung Ji, right? I mean, I haven't seen too much my friend, I have lots of a Korean friend, perhaps in American study, takes on the American military-based issue in the in Seoul, which is at the center of Seoul, means at the center of subjectivity, subjectivity of Korean, right? That sort of issue. I think unless that so self-critique and self uh, analysis can be done. No re, you know, configuring a new intellect, to use Kunze's term, new international alliance is possible, right? So in that sense, the location has everything to do with the community, with the subjectivity generated, rather than simply, um, I, I, I see no problem, for instance, in the beginning of cultural study of the same problem, you participate in the project in England or in the US, that's okay. But then there's something else you need to ground yourself, right? Especially with cultural study, with the, you know, the issue of specificity. So let me, especially a lot of this uh, subjectivity issues and identification with the US, over the past 50 years has become, let me use the term, volunteered. Better term, right? And people get angry if you say for the past, you know, half, half century, places like Taiwan and Korea have become U.S. sub-colony. People get angry, right? But but there's certain truth to it. Uh, and how do we? Um, in that sense, I think I am doing American study, right? To analyze how do we deal with this issue with no solution, of course, but how things are formed, has been formed. So uh, let me mediate to, through a very concrete instance, because I don't like to talk about things abstract, um, to indicate what I mean, which is, which is uh, has been already mentioned by Candace and uh, Oscar Okinawa. Right? 
back from uh, Okinawa early this week, and a group of us were brought in in a public forum by activists and critical intellectual in Okinawa to regionalize Okinawa issue, military base. If you, if, I think some of you might may have read newspaper, right? Hatoyama resigned. The, the Prime Minister resigned because of the base issue. Uh, uh, his, his election campaign promised to remove the base from uh, Okinawa, but then eventually he had to give in, right? and um, he lost it. And eventually he was forced by his country okay, or by his political party to push him out. Now, Okinawa. It's a long-term issue. And Lisa put on the table because Okinawa, the, the military base is still there, indicating that Cold War is never finished in this part of the world. Right? The same thing with North and South Korea or the Taiwan Strait. It's the, the pre-war you know, legacy onto the post-war. To use my own term, Cold War mediates the uh, the colonial moment you know, with the neo-colonial post-war moments. So Okinawa is one of the uh, crystallized the entire historical structure, not to mention 1879, right? indexed by the Japanese uh, empire and, and so on. But it was occupied since the end of the Second World War II by U.S. military. Until 1972, I guess I'm giving a very quick countdown, until 1972 is a military government. And we living by the Okinawa, only several hours, of, uh, actually one hour away, without taking note of that. And the and Okinawa, and you go there. I hate to this, but but this time I found out um, our Taiwan independence friend went there, checked with them. They were very grateful. The military base was there, still there. You know what I mean? Because yeah. people there want to remove the military base. So even the knowledge, without any knowledge, this anti-base movement has been going on for what 60 years. So in other words, there is no understanding of knowledge of our neighbor. This is a part of the structure, right? And without the knowledge and understanding, this is a U.S. dictatorship, military dictatorship, governing the island until 1972, and afterwards overtaken by the agreement between Japanese. This is an ample treaty, some of you know that. Japanese government and U.S. So the dictator, military government move behind the scene, come forward to the same Japanese government with the U.S. behind them. Right. So this is the so so um, Hanoyama trying to claim certain equivalent relation with the U.S. Right. Fail. But this is the entire post-war history of Japan. And uh, 